Hello everybody, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We're going to be painting a fun Christmas painting today that can also be used to make a Christmas card. So the first thing that you want to do is cover your watercolor piece of paper in a layer of water using a mop brush and your piece of paper is going to be in portrait position for this tutorial. If you have a um, long and narrow piece of paper, even more narrow than the one I'm using, uh, it'll work great because we're just painting a long vertical branch. Oops. And the mop brush that I'm using is by Windsor & Newton <clears throat> and it's linked in the description if you want to uh, have one of your own. So just be mindful of going over it several times to Avoid any pooling of water on your paper. You want it to be nice and evenly spread out across your page. Sometimes I even like to tint my wash just a tiny bit so that I could see if I missed any, any areas. But for this one, we don't want to do that because um, there's going to be various colors going on in the background. And I don't want to tint the border in any uh, shade. So now I'm going to switch brushes here to a round brush. Size doesn't matter. I have a big one just to pick up kind of large uh, amounts of watercolor here. And so I'm starting with brown. And you know what? Actually, what we should have done is just roughly traced out our branch ahead of time. Uh, but that's in hindsight. You can learn from my mistakes. So I'm going to kind of dab my brown watercolor in the areas that I think that my branch is going to be. Again, this is why it would have been very handy to pencil in that branch ahead of time. It's going to look something like that. <laughs> and then you also want to take some green and do the same thing where, uh, with a green, where you think that your pine needles of your branch are going to come from. So, gosh, this really would have been easier if I penciled it in first. But we are not going to waste a good piece of paper, especially a piece of cotton paper. This stuff is not cheap. So I hope that that's sort of the layout of my branch. Um, <clears throat> we are going to let that completely, completely dry before we move on to our next step. Okay, so now that our piece of paper is completely dry, I'm going to take a pencil, and this is what we should have done first in hindsight, but that's okay. We're going to make this work. And we're going to pencil in where we think that our um, branch is going to go. So my pine branch, I'm trying to follow the brown that I already painted on. Um, but it's going to <clears throat> come like this. Move like this and then have some coming there. Maybe one coming here. Um... The thing is, when you're doing this, you want to leave enough space on the bottom because we're going to have this delicate ornament hanging from the branch and I've already not left myself enough room. Um, so that's why it's important to have a nice long piece of paper when you're doing this. So I'm going to have another thing there and it looks like I had a branch or an offshoot this way and perhaps one over here and then it would be nice to have my ornament hanging from here but that just it's not going to look nice so i'll have it hanging from a branch up here and then There's my ornament. Okay, so I hope that doesn't look too funny. Mm -hmm. 
And we also want to leave enough room for a Christmas greeting, but I see that's not going to happen either. We'll see. We'll see when we paint it all in what it looks like. Um, what I'm going to do, because my ornament here is clearly overlapping one of my pine branch offshoots, I have to be mindful of painting my ornament on top of the pine offshoot. So we're going to have to use some really pigmented red to make sure that we go over that green or we can just try to avoid painting this area. We'll see. I'm not going to bother making, because you usually I would erase this pencil mark um, to make it just light enough for me to see, but not so dark that it's going to show through the watercolor. But we are going to use a dark brown or brown mixed with black to really um, intensify the brown. So it should, 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 should is the key word, uh, cover up that. So let's begin here. Now keep in mind that your branch is going to start off thicker and then It's going to thin out as you move down. So that's our branch. It's looking a little bit too curvy for me. A branch is supposed to look a little more jagged to look natural. But <clears throat> we'll work with that. Now I'm going to grab my size one by Winsor & Newton. It's just uh, a smaller brush, but it's long. I, I, I think it's technically a round brush but I call it a liner brush because it feels like one. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just actually using my bigger brush just to make the green um, pigment that I'm going to be using. I'm just mixing a few greens together and then I'm going to add some black to it to make it darker. So let's start with this one over here. I have, uh, I think, yeah, it will be released before this tutorial, but I released, or will release, it's in, when this video will be released, it will already be released, which is a tutorial, um, about four techniques, how to paint pine trees. And I go over this type of pine, sorry, not pine trees, pine branches. And I go over this type of pine branch, uh, which is a white pine in that tutorial, as well as three others. So go check that one out if you're interested. But basically what we're doing here, I'm gonna, go a little bit more forward. What we're doing here is choosing, actually I'm not even choosing a focal point, I'm just flicking these really long pine needles all along the, uh, sorry my mother is texting me non-stop here. <laughs> um, that's why you keep hearing those vibrations. <clears throat> so, sorry. You just paint these long pine needles along the length of the branch that you painted. Mother. I cannot describe my tutorial here because my mom just keeps going with the pictures. She's having a good time with her friends. Anyways, uh, yeah, so you just keep going along the length of the branch that you painted 
uh, and you just want to keep the brush strokes really long and as straight as you can and you just achieve that by flicking it's the motion is kind of in your knuckle like you go like this and your thing it's, it's kind of hard to explain but it's um when you do it from from the top like from your knuckle it's much easier to achieve the look that that we want sometimes I feel like I make no sense in my explanations I bet you anything that my husband is going to call me in any minute So we're just continuing that same pattern along all of the offshoots that we painted when we painted our branch. And you can even go back with, I'm using, I think, I think it's even black here. But you can go in with darker green or just green with more black in it and uh, go over some of your needles just to provide a contrast, have kind of two colors or two shades of green going on. Just adds another element to your painting. You definitely don't have to do this, but that's me. I like to overcomplicate things. Okay, and then my last one here, I have to be careful because uh, this ornament, I, I'm not sure if I paint the red over the green, whether that green will show through. So I'm going to just try and be careful and just not paint on top of the ornament. And you can definitely forego that first step, you know, where we painted the wash and then those um, brown and green blobs. But if you do that, I'm gonna zoom out here. If you don't have that, you just have a completely white piece of paper underneath, which is fine, like that looks nice, uh, but why not make it look a little nicer? By adding a base. That's kind of been my theme in my latest tutorials lately. Whoops, I already went on to my... Okay, so once you have that established, we can go ahead and paint our red ornament. So... And you can make your ornament any color that you want, but I think the red contrasts really nicely with the green of the uh, pine. I think yellow would look nice too. And I'm just going to add some black to the bottom here. And then pick up more red and blend that out. And I've just wet my, like, wet and dried, sorry, clean and dried my paintbrush. And I'm picking up some pigment from the top, drying my paintbrush, and then picking up more until I'm happy with the amount that I've picked up. Or you can also just put a piece of paper towel on the bottom of a paintbrush and lift off the paint like that. 
and that way it basically completely dries that area so that the um, stuff the pigment can't bleed into that area but it's kind of a fine line getting exactly the amount that you want so now I am going to take a beautiful golden yellow and I'm going to paint the little hat that sits on top of the ornament. Where the hook is attached to. I just have to be very careful. Like, see, the red is already starting to bleed into that. I'm gonna go in. So I think I might just wait until the ornament is totally dry to do this as I'm painting the whole thing. <laughs> ah, I'm not patient. It is what it is. Trying to pick some of that up and replace it with a yellow. That's fine, whatever. Okay, now I am just, I'm using a uh, fine tip marker and I'm going to attach um just going to be a little string that's attached to the branch and i'm going to paint or draw a little half circle there that the string is going to be attached to The other thing you can do is add a Christmas greeting somewhere if you have room. I'm probably not going to bother with that, but if I was, I would probably do it over here. It will be a nice balance to the rest of the painting. So that is about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe, hit like on this video, and I will see you in the next one.